Hello, Angela. Hi, John. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great because yeah. I've seen this beautiful hair you have. The okay. Bible says thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead. <laughs> John, that's why I'm laughing. My hair is already too old. Can't you see? What do you mean by old? Well, it's supposed to be, when it's new, it's supposed to be neat and clear on the skin. But this is really outgrown, as you see. My natural hair is coming out. But to me, it, it all looks the same. It's all beautiful anyway. I think mm. that's just kind of a trick that they use here to say it's, it's old, it's new. Well, you might think that it's really beautiful, but it's actually itchy and uncomfortable. I don't know how to keep it now. Well, how often do women play and unplate their hair? Well, it depends on the person. Some people keep it for short, as short as two weeks, others as long as three months. I've seen some women, they change their hair every like week. Yeah, it's because some of them are exaggerate. They are really vain. They care about their outward appearance. But so they different. spend all their time on their hair as opposed mm -hmm. to maybe spending their time on the things of God. Yes, but also it depends on the hairstyle they have. So okay. different hairstyles with different times. Well, what about you? How long does it take you to change your hair? It takes two months because I um, actually don't care much about the hair because I'm fixed here and there doing the work of the Lord. So that's why I prefer this long braid. Now, don't you think that plating is very time consuming and expensive? No, it's not really costly compared to the natural hair because for the natural hair, you need the oils, you need the treatment almost uh, every other day. But so, so basically with the natural hair, you're saying that you basically have to spend all this money to maintain it. Exactly. Whereas with the plates, just plate once. Once. Yeah. Uh -huh. But then uh, again, it's not really time consuming because uh, okay. you, you had, I said you play it once and you have enough time to you do other things. Just kind of forget about it? Mm -hmm. okay. Not really. But, uh, but you, you get, to, get to spend it. more time on things that things that matter more. Exactly. Well, Angela, what kind of hairstyle do you like the most? The one you like because after all, you're my husband. I'm here to please you and uh, do the things that you want. What is the most attractive thing about you? If it's something that can be taken off, like your hair, that's because you're a vain woman. A godly woman will spend more time studying her spiritual appearance before God rather than her physical appearance before man. The Bible is likened unto a mirror. The Bible calls it the perfect law of liberty, looking thereinto. And my question for you is, which mirror do you look into more? The mirror that lets you see your physical appearance or the mirror that lets you see your spiritual appearance? A godly woman will make the service of God more important than her physical appearance and make God her higher priority. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 38, verse number eight, that when Moses was making the laver of brass for the service of the tabernacle, that it, he made it of the looking glasses of the women assembling, which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So these women had these brass mirrors that they used to beautify themselves every day and see their appearance in. And they said, you know what? A, the service of God is more important than me being able to see my physical beauty every day. Angela is losing her hair today, but she is not losing her beauty. Because a godly woman does not need physical things to make her beautiful, but rather she fears the Lord, and so she shall be praised. Many women are beautiful outside, but very ugly inside, like Jezebel. The Bible says, as a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman, which is without discretion. But you know what God thinks about all those women who trust in their beauty, as opposed to trusting in the Lord and make their beauty something they put before God? They'll just simply cast them away. Well, I remember that when I first met Angela, I noticed that Angela was a very unique woman and a peculiar one because most of the women who I had preached the gospel to 
and had been training and had been coming to church, women that valued their physical beauty above their spiritual beauty. And they trusted in their beauty, but not in the Lord, because they would put their beauty as their first priority, not God as their first priority. However, there's an interesting story about Angela, because I had scheduled her to meet me out in the field as we're going out preaching the gospel and showing people how they can be saved. And it was a certain day, just a few months after she had believed herself, and now she was going out sharing her faith with others. And I said, meet me at 4.30 at such and such a place. And then at such exact time, you know, Angela was punctual. She's always been on time. Yeah, our dad taught us to be punctual. So Angela's not one on African time, but knows how to seek the Lord early and be on time for everything, decently and in order. And so Angela showed up, and then I saw, to my surprise, that Angela had this very strange looking hairstyle and she has this half plated, half prepared. And I said, Angela, what happened to you? Well, it's because my sister was plating me and uh, she couldn't finish on time. So I told her to pause a bit, go out preaching the gospel two hours, and then come back to his room. I remember she said, well, I couldn't finish plating my hair because it clocked the time when I needed to go out sharing my faith with people. And so she said, I'll leave my hair undone. That way I can go and not leave undone all that God commanded. And so then mm. Angela was someone who, like, I saw, well, this is someone I need to marry. Because this is a woman who realizes that even if she looks very strange, she's still going to do what God commands to the preference of God's commands as opposed to her own physical appearance. Well, we're not saying that you should neglect your own physical appearance. Uh, for the sake, I'm not saying you should move around with strange hair. But you should not prioritize it. I mean, look good, smell good. That's what a woman should do. Yeah, but at the end of the day, what is all of the good looks and good smells and, and uh, fair gestures when you're not serving God? A woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. What is the difference between physical beauty and spiritual beauty? Physical beauty is that which attracts the attention of man. Spiritual beauty is that which attracts the attention of God. In 1 Peter chapter number 3, the Bible says, Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. You see, physical beauty is something that men's eyes are attracted to, whereas spiritual beauty is that which is God's eyes are attracted to. So a woman who is spiritually beautiful will be someone who has a lot of biblical knowledge. Someone who is a very faithful woman to the things of God. Someone who sings the songs of God. A woman who is a constant and powerful woman of prayer. So spiritual beauty is incorruptible, the Bible says. Whereas physical beauty are things that are corruptible. And now my question to you is, are you physically beautiful only and not also spiritually beautiful the bible tells us that if you want to attract the eyes of god and get god's attention from heaven then you need to have spiritual beauty let me tell you another story about angela <laughs> just a, a short while after knowing angela i was with some of my friends and we had just finished uh, serving the lord that day so we were going back to uh, the place where we were staying and I uh, came across a place where they said, hey, this is Angela's house. So I said, oh, this is where Angela stays, her father's house. And so then we all visited her house. Angela was really shocked, right? I was, I didn't expect, especially you to be there. Yeah, we came in, but we heard hymns playing, you know, because obviously Angela's not singing worldly music, but she has a song of the Lord, a new song, a godly song. And then uh, we came in, we heard the music being played and Angela, was uh, obviously very, very shocked to have us there, but courteously entreated us. And then we were sitting in her, her sitting room of her father, and I was looking around and studying the whole place. And then I saw on the wall a picture <laughs> of her father with several of what looked like his children. And then I looked at it and I said, these, this, this is uh, like a picture of look, all these people with shaven heads or really, really <laughs> well shaped heads. And I, I looked at the picture and I said, what a nice family of boys <laughs> your father has. <laughs> and, then, and then Angela said, those are not boys. That's me and my sister. 
<laughs> so basically, you have、uh, a lot of young girls being told here they need to shave their heads. I was always told they have to shave their heads really, really close because the teachers in the schools that they go to want to look the most pretty in the class. <laughs> so they want to outshow all the young. Growing up, girls. Is that right? That's true. And so they they force all the young girls to shave their heads, and until they get out of school, they're most for the most part forced to look like little boys. That you don't need much money to go to the salon. You know, you don't need to go to a very fancy place for getting a specific hairstyle. But you can even go to the local braiders around the local hairdressers because they can. It's all about the trust that you have with the person. It's not about the money or the kind of place you have gone to. So it's all easy. So let me show you a friend who I used to go to for hairdressing. Uh, since uh, before I got married to John, and she's been the one who has been plating me all along. So to make the braids, you need an extension. Obviously, this is the extension made out of a synthetic fiber. It's called AZ braid, so it's actually affordable. Strictly talks about having long hair as a woman. It says that it's a shame for a woman to have short hair. Strictly in the、uh, book of First Corinthians chapter eleven, it says in the verse、uh, five that you dishonor your husband when you really have short hair. It's a sign of submission. And also in verse eight says that、uh, hair is to be plaited for the sake of your husband to show that you're behind, you're under him, for he's the head as Christ is the head of the church. Also having long hair is for glory and beauty. We know obviously that people look more beautiful with long hair, and that、uh, don't forget that the woman who washed Jesus' feet used her hair to wipe it. So it's very good for a woman to have long hair. I'm glad that my hair is really done in the shortest time possible, and of course, as very cheap as、uh, one wants it to be. Wow, your new hair makes you look as beautiful as Mabira Forest. No, no, no. Wow, with this kind of hair and all of its twists and turns, I just want to get lost in it. No, 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 no. Your new hair is as beautiful as the African sunset. No, no, no. Ah, 
you are like an African queen, and your hair is your crown. No, no. The braids on your head are just as strong and resilient as you. No. Hello, Angela. Hi, John. What? What did you do to your hair? I got it plaited. Would you like it? Yeah, looks great. Okay, like like great. a like like a dead cat. What? <laughs>